Hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing good and all is well. Today's chat is going to be about more current events which tie into some previous history that we previously discussed in one of my other videos. Now for those of you who watch my other video about the Igbo landing, you probably remember me mentioning Lazaredo. Now, Lazaredo was the nine-story quarantine facility where the slaves were quarantined at before entering the Savannah port. If you haven't watched my other video, no worries. I will explain everything as we get into it a little bit more. But Lazaredo, it was near Lazaredo Creek before it was torn down. And with this being a quarantine facility, of course, there was a lot of death surrounding this area. Now, those who did die, unfortunately... Their bodies were buried in unmarked graves near Lazaredo as well as Lazaredo Creek. And all of this took place on the west end of Tybee Island. Now, I say all that to say what's going on today. Now, today, I just want you all to know that there are plans to disturb this historical slave burial site for a bridge project. Yes, you heard me correctly. They are, there are plans for them to disturb the site where Lazaredo was, which is near Lazaredo Creek, for them to proceed with building a new bridge and all of that good stuff. I mean, as if Savannah isn't already haunted enough. But that's another story in another video, of course. So with that being said, let's chat. Around 1733, General James Oglethorpe, a representative of the trustees of Georgia, settled the town of Savannah in the new colony of Georgia. And between 1735 and 1750, Georgia was the only British American colony who attempted to prohibit slavery of the black people. Now, the trustees or founders of Georgia, they made the decision to ban slavery as a matter of public policy. Now, don't get it wrong or don't get it twisted. The trustees and General Oglethorpe, they were not opposed to or against the slavery of the Africans because it was morally wrong, cruel, and inhumane. They banned slavery because it went against their economic and social intentions. And they were also worried that the slaves could potentially escape and join the Spanish nearby in Florida who offered them freedom in exchange for military services. Now, the trustees, they envisioned a comfortable lifestyle for the early settlers. They believed the settlers didn't really need all that extreme wealth associated with slaves and plantations. And instead, they felt the settlers should work for themselves rather than depending on others or the labor of slaves. Now, the trustees believed that the silk and other Mediterranean style commodities that they planned to produce could easily be produced by the Europeans. So the labor of enslaved Africans was really unnecessary. Now, in my opinion, the trustees, they did have a pretty good strategy. But of course, things didn't really work out the way that they planned. Now, Oglethorpe, he began to realize that many of the settlers, they really didn't want to work. And they began to complain and state that they would never make any money unless they were allowed to enslave the Africans. Now, a ban on slavery was created. And in 1735, two years after the first settlers arrived, legislation prohibiting slavery in Georgia was passed by the House of Commons. Now, of course, we know that this didn't last very long and many of the settlers really ignored the legislation. So just let's just be honest about that. And I'm going to get into that a little bit more. So not only that, the trustees, they were bombarded with letters and petitions demanding that slavery be permitted in Georgia. Now, the trustees, they held their grounds for quite a while and they stuck to the ban. But by the mid 1740s. Oglethorpe, he had lost his interest in Georgia, and they were starting to give in. Now, things drastically changed in 1742. In 1742, Oglethorpe defeated the Spanish at the Battle of Bloody Marsh, and he returned back to England. Now, with Oglethorpe gone, many of the settlers, they began to ignore the ban and pretty much illicitly or illegally import slaves through the Augusta, Georgia area. 
Now, the ban on slavery, it was repealed in 1749. And by January the 1st of 1751, slavery was legal in Savannah. Okay, so now that we have a little backstory, let's chat a little bit more about Tybee Island and Lazaretto before we get into what's going on today. Okay, so Tybee Island, it was a very essential development. It was very essential, I'm sorry, to the development of the Georgia colony. Tybee Island is located about 18 miles from the colonial capital of Savannah. And Tybee Island, it played a major role in the Atlantic slave trade. Tybee Island pretty much guarded um, the river that was used by the ships as an entrance into Savannah. Now, after slavery became legal and really before, because they were already importing slaves before it became legal, as we stated earlier. But anyway, after slavery became legal, the demand for slave labor on Sea Island cotton and rice plantations skyrocketed. So Savannah's merchants, they began to directly import slaves from West Africa. Now, as I previously stated in my other video, the slaves voyage across the Atlantic Ocean from West Africa to Savannah lasted anywhere from four to six months. And during the voyage, the slaves pretty much lied in their own and others urine, feces and other bodily fluids. And of course, we know that these conditions coupled with the length of the voyage, led to many infectious diseases. So before the slaves entered the Savannah port, they were quarantined at Lazaredo. Now, while at Lazaredo, the slaves were examined and inspected by a physician to determine if they harbored any infectious diseases. Now, at this time, I want to take a quick little moment to talk to you all a little bit more about Lazaredo because it plays a very, very important part into what's going on in, in today's you know times or present day. But Lazaredo, it was a nine story quarantine facility, as we said earlier. But this nine story quarantine facility, it was built on 104 acres of land near Lazaredo Creek. Now, the reports differ when it comes to the actual year the facility was built. Some say 1767 and others say 1768. Whichever one it was, we know that the facility was built around this time. But anyway, back to the story. Now, the 104 acres of land were said to have been purchased from Jos Josiah Tatnell. And he, they purchased that from him about a year before the facility was actually constructed. Now, after the slaves were inspected and examined at Lazaredo, the healthy slaves, you know, of course, they were sold off onto different plantations and everything in the nearby areas. And the unhealthy slaves or the slaves who harbored the diseases. They remained at the facility. Now, the slaves who they kept at the facility, they were very malnourished and they harbored all type of diseases such as yellow fever, smallpox and much more. Sometimes the diseases that they harbored were so contagious, the entire ship carrying the slaves would be quarantined. Or the ill slaves or diseased slaves, they would be put in small boats and rowed to their hammocks on Tybee Island. Some of the ill slaves or the slaves that carried the diseases, they were even thrown overboard to swim to Tybee Island. Very sad. And to make matters even worse, as if things could possibly get any worse, some of the slaves who arrived at Tybee Island became infected with diseases that they didn't have. Or if they had a disease, they became infected with a more contagious or more infectious disease than the one that they arrived with. And if this happened, then they were ordered to stay at the Lazaretto facility indefinitely or forever now it was a very very terrible situation and the slaves who succumbed to their illness or you know their health conditions and everything that they were dealing with they were buried in unmarked graves on the west end of tybee island near lazaredo and lazaredo creek now tybee island's lazaredo was in operation until it was reported in ruinous conditions in 1785 
Now, Savannah as a whole, it played a major role in the Atlantic slave trade for about 48 years. Now, I say all of that to bring us to what's going on today. Now, as of February of 2022, Tybee Island officials plan to disrupt possible slave burial sites near Lazaredo Creek for a bridge project. Yep, I'm going to say it again. For a bridge project. Now, Tybee Island City Manager Sean Gillen, he says, and I quote, The project is a long time coming and would greatly improve both traffic and safety for island residents. Now, Julia Pierce, a resident of Tybee Island who has actually been following the history of the island for many years, she stated, and I quote, according to the reports, that our enslaved ancestors were quarantined here and their bodies lie within the Lazaredo. And we would like those bodies to at least be looked at. Now, she go on to say some other things as well, but you know, I can only quote so much. Now, this area is actually privately owned by someone named Patrick Matthews, according to the reports. And the reports, they also state that Matthew made a statement on the situation as well. And Matthew's statement, and I quote, was that we've dug in here and put septic tanks in here since I've been around. And I haven't seen any bones, anything that might be any type of bodies. I don't know what to say about it, except that whatever graves were here removed and they aren't here anymore now there is currently a plan for the georgia department of transportation to acquire the surrounding land from the property owner and begin the construction by 2025 well that brings us to the end of today's chat but tell me what you all think do you believe they should leave well enough alone and not disturb the land? I mean, if there are remains and they disturb the burial site, you know, I mean, what about the things that they harbored when they were buried? Do we know that that's not lying beneath the soil and they're going to uproot some new type of organisms or something? I mean, like we're not dealing with enough in the world when it comes to those type of things. I Got to tip lightly on that, y'all, because I don't want YouTube to take this video down. But you all know what I'm talking about, the endemic. Um, and I don't know about you all, but I don't think we need to be discovering anything new at this time. But anyway, if and when they do begin the construction, do you all think that they will find remains? And if they do find remains, do you all think that they're going to tell us what they find or they're going to keep it hidden and under wraps and undercover? I mean, there are actually so many unanswered questions. I question along what the landowner said, like if they were there, then they've been moved. Like, do you know a little more that you need to be telling us? But anyway, like I said, there are just so many questions that need to be answered. And just I just I'm not sure what to even think about this situation. But I would like to know what you all think when it comes to this situation. I would like for you all to please tell me what you think down in the comments below. Please like the video if you haven't already. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Remember, we're still on that climb. And if you would like to support the channel, then the information to support will be in the description below. And until next time, peace, love, and blessings.